So this this eleventh this eleventh anniversary follows um, the first ever uh, decline of the EFF in this in these past general elections. To what would you attribute your decline? Well, number one, I think. Well, I don't think uh, from what we have gathered. I mean, and everybody would have known this. Uh, there has been an up uh, fight to kill the economic freedom fighters. Um, I think following our 10th uh, anniversary rally, and not just us filling up FNB Stadium, but everything that led up to that, it scared the heck out of the white establishment. So we know that we, number one, there were a lot of new political parties that came on the scene that were sponsored by the Stellenbosch Mafia, uh, the media. It was an extremely hostile environment. So we went just Mashaba up against the normal political parties. We were up a very well-oiled uh, establishment, uh, and we have taken that into consideration. And we've also taken into consideration um, our election strategy uh, and how best we can improve that. Um, but largely, I think it is that. Uh, the fact that over the past 11 years, well, 10 years leading up to our anniversary, I mean, the EFF, we have shown ourselves. I mean, we are diligent. We've uh, proved ourselves to be conscientious. Uh, we are intellectual, we are on the ground, and we are all that. Uh, and we've brought many p uh, issues onto the political arena over the 10 years that we've been there. Not just brought it there, but, you know, we get public discourse on it. And those things are scaring uh, the white establishment. And I think even now, uh, as we move forward and we've consolidated the left forces, as you know, we've got the progressive uh, focus going on there in Parliament, it's going to be worse. But we are here today just to remind our fighters that it's no retreat, it's no surrender. We are going back. We are on the opposition benches. As you can see, we've been performing in, uh, at our optimal in Parliament uh, the past uh, three weeks, uh, both in the committee meetings and those budgets that we have to, uh, that Parliament adopted, obviously, without even doing proper consultation, etc. But, you know, we, we showed up, we gave excellent and for anybody who watched it input and it's not just i mean i know the media tends to focus on all the you know the back team that we do and you know we have a we have a great uh, sense of sarcasm and you know fighting back but if you actually listen we get solid input on how best uh and how best we need to align our policies here in south africa to be able to reduce the inequality, actually eradicate the inequality that we find ourselves in. And now, as you know, we've got this whole fake GNU that actually just uh, white supremacist alliance between the DA uh, and the ANC. So, yeah, it's going to be hardcore, but uh, we're ready for it. And uh, the CIC today will be addressing that. And, you know, no retreat, no surrender. Ground forces, we back on the ground. In your... <laughs> <laughs> Man, first of all, I cannot believe that this lady is EFF spokesperson. Man, I mean, like this. Maybe this is the reason why they don't let her speak that much with the media. Maybe this is the reason why they don't let her speak to the media. I mean, the EFF says that. The reason why they did not perform as expected is because of the white establishment that was working against the EFF. It's because of the white establishment. It has nothing to do with their policies. It has nothing to do with the leadership of the EFF. It has nothing to do with an open border policy that they were advocating for and the leader of the party was advocating for to a point where he was telling people to keep their vote if they want him to actually advocate for the closure of borders in the country. So it is not EFF's fault. It is not the leader's fault. It is not their strategy. It is not how they communicate with the people of this country. It is not because the leader of the EFF insulted South Africans time and time again. It is because of the white establishment. This is why the EFF slightly lo lost uh, uh, percentages in the elections. I mean, if you're going to say that it's because of the white establishment, are you insinuating that people cannot think for themselves? Is that what you're saying? 
that South Africans cannot think for themselves. Because Jacob Zuma can say the same thing. Jacob Zuma can say the same thing. And if you look at MK Party and if you look at how MK Party performed in the elections, you can see that nothing is going to stop people if they want to vote for you. No narrative is going to stop people to vote for you if people want to vote for you. So why is the EFF saying that no it's because of this narrative that was spread about against the EFF this is the reason why the EFF has lost so the EFF fails to understand that if people want to vote for you people will vote for you 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 remember what Jacob Zuma and the MK party went through in the elections you remember what people said about MK party what people said about Jacob Zuma but people still went out and voted for Jacob Zuma and now the MK party is the third biggest political party in the country Despite the, 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 the horrible press that was coming against Jacob Zoom. So why is the EFF saying that, no, it is because of the white establishment? Why can't you just say that, no, man, like Jacob Zuma coming with the MK party is the one that actually hindered our, our, our growth in the previous elections? Because this is what Julius Malema used to say, that the people that left the ANC because they were not happy with Ramaphosa, those people voted for the EFF, but as soon as Jacob Zuma opened up his own political party, those people went from the EFF and, and, and voted for Jacob Zuma because they were never the supporters of the EFF to start with. They were the supporters of MK party. So what is this new narrative that the EFF is coming with that people were campaigning against us? There was, uh, 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 there, there was effort from the media, from the social media uh, to, to talk bad about the EFF. As if that is going to stop the people from voting for you because if, if there's anything that we can see about these elections is that no narrative is going to stop the people to vote for you if they want to vote for you. People still voted for Jacob Zoom despite the terrible press that he got. <laughs> man, like, it's insane, man. It's insane. And because and it looks like this is a new narrative of the EFF. The EFF is not going to talk about the fact that MK Party is here. This is the reason why we have lost the support. No, the, it seems like the EFF is willing to not talk about that. If anything, they are going to blame everything besides themselves and besides the fact that MK Party actually took their support. And there is nothing shameful to actually admit that, okay, these people being here is the reason why we have lost. But no, man, it seems like there's a new narrative in the EFF that we have lost these elections because of the white part or, or, or of, of the white establishment because of the media because of, of, of the people talking bad about the EFF on social media insinuating that South Africans cannot think for themselves <laughs> he says millions are being pumped into campaigns that help in destabilizing the EFF in the 2024 elections and prior to that the white capitalist establishment invested a lot of resources to delegitimize the economic freedom fighters through social media, through mainstream media, through everything else that they do. And we were not adequately prepared to counter an ideological political onslaught against the organization. Part of the reasons why the EFF did not grow in these elections is because there was consented ideological warfare against the organization. For the first time you had... Meaning that there is nothing wrong with the leadership of the party. There is nothing wrong with the policies of the EFF. There is nothing wrong. Like the EFF is perfect. The policies that you are, you, you are, you are advocating for are perfect. This is what average South Africans want, but because these South Africans cannot think for themselves, they actually allowed the considered effort from the white establishment to push them away from the EFF. This is what Floyd Shibabu is saying. I mean, like, it's pretty insulting. Man. It's insulting to stand there and to insinuate that people cannot think for themselves. I mean, like, I cannot stress this enough that it is insulting to insinuate that people cannot vote for you. If people love you, they will vote for you still. I mean, these people are saying that, oh, there was a considered effort to delegitimize the EFF. Like, can you think about the, the, the effort that was there to, 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 to delegitimize the ANC? 
Can you think about the effort that was there to delegitimize the, the DA? You remember how many people actually went out against the, the DA? The DA, just like with the EFF, many people were actually competing against them. Many people were competing against them, but these political parties are not coming out and saying that, no, many political parties were actually competing against us, and this is the reason why we didn't do as expected. But it's only the EFF that is saying that these people were, were, were campaigning against us, and we didn't do as expected. I mean, like, top three political parties, of course, you're gonna, of course there will be people to attack you. Of course, there will be people to attack you because people want the same sports that you got. This is the reason why you would see smaller political parties going at the ANC, going at the DA, going at the EFF, because those political parties want the same things that the ANC, DA, and EFF had, which is to be the biggest political parties in the country. This is the reason why they will attack you. It's not like they, they, they only attacked the EFF. ANC and the DA, they were also attacked in the, in the previous elections. But they are not coming out and blaming those attacks and, and saying that this is the reason why we did not perform as expected. I mean, like, if people love the policies of the EFF so much, if people love the leadership of the EFF so much, I mean, like, nothing, like, absolutely nothing could stop them from voting for you. Nothing could stop them from voting for you. But they didn't vote for you. They didn't vote for you. <laughs> opposition parties who are not opposing the sitting government all of them they were opposing the EFF Shivambu reiterated the party's stance on opening the borders and uniting the African continent he says this will help Africans reclaim their space in global politics and resources oh so they still continue with the open border policy <laughs> so they didn't learn anything for from advocating for this policy they didn't learn anything for advocating for this policy they still go on about it that we need to open up the borders we need to open up the borders okay okay fine okay fine if this is what you guys think that average south africans want continue to talk about it continue to talk about it let's see what extra what it does for the eff 2026 the elections are coming are you telling me that the EFF will continue to talk about this policy? Okay, fine. All of them, they were opposing the EFF. Shivambu reiterated the party's stance on opening the borders and uniting the African continent. He says this will help Africans reclaim their space in global politics and resources. As a pan-Africanist organization, we embrace pan-Africanism to say that gradually the founding manifesto of the EFF says we are going to advocate for the gradual integration of the African continent in terms of infrastructure, in terms of the economy, in terms of how we get to relate amongst ourselves. That we must play a meaningful role in the development of the economy in all other parts of the African continent. Shivambu says the party <laughs> almost became government this year, but decided not to... <laughs> the, part, the party almost became government this year. <laughs> These people are failing to read the room, and I, they are failing to read the room, and it's quite disappointing that the EFF has been around for such a long time, and they are failing to do a, a proper introspection and actually get to understand why people are now gravitating to other political parties instead of the EFF. Because you remember, the EFF was talking about winning the elections. If not winning the elections, they would be the second biggest political party in the country. But right now, they are number four. Right now, they are number four. And I heard Julius Malema saying that the EFF in the upcoming elections, they will be the third biggest political party in the country again. Meaning that Um Kondo is, is there and, and they are not happy with Um Kondo Isizo being the third biggest political party in the country because they understand that right now they have been reduced to extra as extra as political parties. When we talk about the big parties right now, we don't mention the EFF anymore. We don't mention the EFF anymore. But it's funny how these people are so detached, man, from reality. They are completely detached from the from the reality, man. They still believe that the, the EFF will grow. While they, they, they continue to advocate for the same things they, they, they advocated for, 
Like it is, it is so, it is so strange to watch. Man. It is so strange to watch. You would think that a political party that has been around for eleven years would be able to do a proper in, in, introspection and get to understand why they they performed the way they did <laughs> in the previous elections. But for them to come out with these excuses and say that this is the reason why we have performed so bad, <laughs> it is sad, man. It is said, guys. I don't know, man. Please tell me what you think. Go to comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button at the most important part. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso. I will see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>